In this video, we're going to be showing you how to use the Rosetta Fold All Atom model using the Neurosnap platform. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Neurosnap platform, it's essentially a website where you can go and access all these different bioinformatic tools and models very easily and without any technical experience or coding experience. And for those of you who are uh, academics or in industry, this is a really great way to get started with these tools and models without actually having to deal with the hassles of getting started with bioinformatics. So in the case of Rosetta Fold All Atom, all we're really going to do is select the tool over here. And then from there, we're now at the uh, user submission panel where we can actually enter our inputs and all the different proteins and molecules that we want to fold. Now, for those of you who aren't too experienced with Rosetta Fold All Atom, it's a protein structure prediction model similar to AlphaFold 2. But unlike other protein structure prediction models that exist currently, Rosetta Fold All Atom can support different types of molecules such as nucleotides and small ions, as well as ligands and other small molecules. So this is really exciting as a major limitation of most protein structure prediction models, including AlphaFold, is the fact that it doesn't really support anything besides proteins and only proteins. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at the MIC-MAX complex when it's in complex with some DNA. Now, these two proteins are transcription factors that play a crucial role in cell growth, proliferation, metabolism, and apoptosis. These proteins are generally part of a big network of genes that regulate the expression of other genes, making them central to many cellular processes. And mic -C in particular is also an oncogene, which means it is involved in the transformation of cells into cancer cells when mutated or expressed at high levels. For that reason, we're really going to be focusing on this complex within this uh, demonstration. Now, what we're going to do is I actually have the sequences, and we're going to enter the amino acid sequences for the two proteins right over here. So as we can see, the first one is going to be MYC. This is the, um, this is the sequence for MYC. And over here is the MAX um, protein. So we have the sequence over here. And that's for the actual nucleotide that we're going to be uh, doing the simulation with. We're going to enter it right over here. So I just copied and pasted it. And now, um, if you wanted to uh, additionally provide like, um, you know, like a ligand or some other type of small molecule, you can supply that as an SDF over here, but this really isn't necessary for the sake of our demonstration. And as for a custom MSA, so uh, protein structure prediction models like this one, as well as AlphaFold2, they typically depend on coevolutionary uh, co information that's found uh, and extracted through MSAs. So if you want to provide your own MSA, then we have the option for it over here. If you don't want to provide an MSA, that's fine. We will generate one using the Colab Fold API. Um, and generally, we find that the results from the Colab Fold API tend to be very good. So now that we have our, um, our inputs that we want for this um, you know, demonstration, we're just going to hit the Run Job button, and we'll let the Neurosnap platform do the rest. In the meantime, you can go do whatever. You'll get an email once the results are ready, and typically it doesn't take too long for these types of uh, smaller demonstrations and simulations. We are now back with the results, and as we can see, this job went by fairly quickly with a runtime of only about one minute. So looking at the structure, it already looks quite promising, especially when we compare it to the experimental structure on the PDB. We see that both the MIC and MAX proteins are interacting with more or less the same region of DNA. So this is a great scene, uh, this is a great sign right off the bat to see that kind of consistency. And additionally, the next thing we're going to look at is the metrics that Rosetta Fold All Atom produces that we can then use to assess the quality of the complex we've received. So the most important metric is definitely going to be the PLDDT score. And for those of you who have used AlphaFold 2 or ESM Fold, you're probably very familiar with this metric as it's a per residue metric that basically tells us the model's confidence in the orientation and the position of a particular residue within a structure. Now, for those of you who are truly astute, you'll also notice that uh, the nucleotides are also colored by PLDDT. So Rosetta Fold All Atom also outputs uh, a PLDDT score for molecules like nucleotides. And this is really fantastic because now we can use that to also assess the quality of uh, the, stru like the nucleotides within the structure as well. Now, there are other metrics as well, including PAE and mean PAE. In this particular example, they're not going to be very useful, but generally PAE can be used to interpret different domains within larger complexes and uh, monomers. Uh, if you have any questions about PAE, I would definitely encourage you to check out our videos on AlphaFold2 as we go into a little bit more depth on those. And lastly, we'll also talk about the PLDDT chart. So generally speaking, you want your PLDDT scores to be higher. And it seems that for this molecule, the PLDDT score is quite high overall, which means that this is probably a very good structure um, to trust, uh, at least according to Rosetta Fold All Atom.
Now I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions or want to want to figure out more details on certain things, leave a comment below and we'll try to address it as soon as possible. If you want to see more videos like this, consider giving us a like or subscribe and we hope to see you in the next one.